Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm always so honored and excited to have you here. And I have exciting news to kick off this episode. First, I just want to say this incredible episode will also be available on the podcast. So if you find yourself starting this episode and you'd prefer to stream it, you can hop over to the HD CEO Psyche podcast and you'll be able to stream it over there. I also have 3 p.m. and more coffee because, you know, it's just been a day. What I wanted to talk to you guys about today is the not self purpose and the madness of being normal, the madness of the normal mind. I think this is such an important topic that we chat about. And I feel as though there's something here that's finally going to flip the switch for someone that's been identifying with the not self. And this is something I talk to my clients about all the time. If I say something about the not self, a characteristic of the not self, often what happens is people go, oh my God, that's me. <laughs> you nailed it. I'm always thinking about things that don't matter with that open head center. And I'll sometimes have clients come to me and they'll say, you know, Ashley, I don't know if I'm just thinking about things that don't matter, but, and then they continue the sentence. When we identify with the not self characteristics of our openness, we cannot use those centers as wisdom. And in business, how those centers are used as wisdom is how we sell. We sell through our openness. However, the only way you can sell through your openness is if you are not identifying with the information you are bringing in there. Ra who said something, which I always giggled at. I loved Ra, love Ra. And I also love Tony Robbins. And I feel they're very similar. They're very no bullshit, say it like it is. And Ra said that humanity is mad and he is normal. And he said it's because people are not confronting the truth. And he said it's comforting yet tragic. So I want to dive into... Mapping out now, it's kind of complicated when we start to get a mapping out the not self mind, but at least giving you a starting place for your map on where that not self may be taking hold. Raw also said, I'm not interested in saving humanity. I can't save humanity because the life is or they live in the density of the not self. Let me re say that. Raw said, I'm not interested in saving humanity. I can't save humanity because they live in the density of the not self. 4%, now I want to say this before we officially kick this off, 4% of people wake up, 4% of people. I want to ask you right here, right now, are you part of that 4%? Because I have a lot of people that will look me dead in the eye and claim they are and not take action on what they know to be true for them. Look me dead in the eye and say, yes, I am part of the 4%, proclaim it, declare it, and then two seconds later, go back on that. It requires a new version of self. It requires opting out of disconnecting from the madness of being normal. Because as Ross said, you can't save humanity in his mind because they live in the density of the not self. I still remember this quote from Ron. He said he had hoped, he had believed that he would just show up one day, wake up the generators and they would go off and wake up the rest of the world. And he said 15 years later, I have the same generators coming to me with the same problems. And as someone who has helped thousands of people in the online space using human design, I agree with his numbers of 4% of people wake up and the majority of people live out the madness of the not self purpose over and over and over and over again. And it's often not because they're not identifying or they're, sorry, they're not seeing that they're doing that. It's then, what do you do with that information? That's the question. What do you do with that information after you realize you are identifying with it? And that's what I specialize in helping my clients with. And sometimes that is a switch that's flipped immediately. And sometimes it is that discipline and creating the discipline so that it becomes flow. One thing I want you to keep in mind as we get started with breaking down the not self purpose and helping to give you a map of the not self is what you currently consider right and wrong is through the lens of the not self. What you consider right and wrong is nurtured within the nature of the not self. 
So it really doesn't mean anything. This is one of the things I say to my clients consistently when they come to me, you have to be willing to rethink everything you know to be true. I think that was actually the original tagline of the HD CEO Psyche podcast, rethink everything you know to be true. Why? Because everything you believe to be true about yourself, about business, about wealth, about everything has been nurtured within the nature of the not self. And especially if you are identifying with aspects of the not self. One thing I do want to say, I never have show notes, so we just flow with it. And before I forget, I want to say this. I often get people that believe that because they have definitions somewhere, they don't experience dysfunctional energy there. Through the openness, you have the not self. Why? Well, you're taking in other people's energy through those centers. You are amplifying it at 200% and you are identifying with it. So it's not your energy. The definition can still be dysfunctional. And I think this is where a lot of people get trapped because it feels more like them, especially people early in their journey of human design that I work with. They're starting to recognize the openness, what is not theirs. However, definition feels much more like them. So the problem that can happen there is you can have what Ra called an unhealthy expression of your definition. Your definition is your strengths, your channels, your defined centers. Those are your strengths, but you can have an unhealthy expression of it. And within that, I find that is where people get stuck the most because it feels most like them. Growing up, I would have died on the hill of some of the identities I had, been willing to die on the hill of it being me. I have a defined G-center. And the more I decondition, the more I can see how actually unhealthy the expression of my identity and direction in life actually was. So your definition absolutely can still have an unhealthy expression. That's what's called an unhealthy expression versus the not self. So I hope that distinction helps. Uh, the not self is simply not you. We don't call it that if it's divine because the definition is you. <laughs> it is what is consistent within you. All right. You guys ready to jump into this? The not self purpose is essentially the purpose of your not self, the purpose of your openness. Again, I can show you guys. I can help map it for you guys. But it's not just knowing the information. It's what do you do with the information? And that's one of my favorite things to help people with. Ra actually said, you must be selfish and nourish your awareness because if you are not, you will be lost out there, lost in the normal world. And this goes into a post I made recently on Instagram where I said, uniqueness cannot be compared. And yet, one of the fascinating things I'm seeing over and over again, particularly in the spiritual space, is we realize we're unique beings. We realize we're differentiated. I think human design now is so popular. You can't get away from those basic bitch facts at the end of the day. And everyone can't wait still to give away their authority. Everyone can't wait still to be like someone else. And this conversa conversation was being had in my projector mastermind today, Millionaire Projectors. It's for projectors that have the goal of scaling million dollar plus businesses. And we were talking about the nuances of profile and leveraging your profile, which in business is your public role, for positioning in business and therefore being able to leverage that positioning in every aspect of your business, your copy, your marketing, sales, et cetera. And one of the themes that kept coming out was how often people were trying to be a different profile line and not actually nurturing who they be, not actually nurturing and cultivating their uniqueness and their differentiation. So this is something that, Yes, we can flip the switch and it requires a discipline before it becomes flow. I'm going to say that again, changing your reality, changing your identity and disconnecting from the not self purpose requires discipline before it becomes flow. And at the end of the day, we are always also living in the program. That's what Ross said. The goal isn't to just transcend the program. The goal is not to transcend being human. I have worked with Everyone from people just starting out to multi multi-millionaires, massive corporations, massive businesses that a lot of people look up to in the online space. And I have yet to meet someone that has transcended being human. We all have fears. We And fears are going to come from your awareness centers, your splenic center, your ajna, your emotional center. We all have doubt. We all have confusion. We all are going to bump up against resistance and trial and error. No one's going to actually transcend the human experience. It's how fast can you get back on track? 
how fast can you notice the not self purpose and realign to your inner authority and your inner truth? How fast can you notice the homogenization starting to grab hold within you, within your business and come back to being individuated? That's the nuance that makes a difference. That's the nuance that allows someone to be successful and sustainable, scalable success and one hit wonders. I always use the example of Hanson versus Queen. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember Hanson and Mbop. If you're not, you have to go to YouTube after this episode and type in Hanson band Mbop. It's ridiculous. But anyway, they were a one hit wonder. Never heard of again. All right. You guys want to get started in this? Let's get started in this. When we're looking at this, one more thing I want to say, actually, the not self lays the foundation for our homogenized purpose. I want you to write that down. The not self lays the foundation for our homogenized purpose, which again, if you're operating through the homogenized purpose, you're not actually living out your different differentiation and your purpose. All right, let's break it down. Let's get into this, my friends. I just have the just now chart up. We're not really digging into the chart itself. I just wanted to body graph up as we went through this. All right. A channel of mutation today. I mean, it feels like a very mutative day. So it, it's, oh yeah, we won't get into it. It's one of my favorite channels, but we're not going to get into it. The head center. All right. So we know this, right? The head center, a center of inspiration, mental pressure, doubt, confusion, questions. These are basic bitch level aspects of the head center. The not self thing theme is thinking about things that don't matter. Not self question is, am I trying to answer everybody else's questions? Now, here's the thing and the nuance that a lot of people aren't realizing. What the true not self purpose of the head center is, is to avoid thinking about things that do matter. And to avoid thinking about things that do matter you occupy yourself with thinking about things that don't matter. It's a, an important distinction because that's often a question I ask my clients when they say, you know, I, this might be my undefined head center and thinking about things that don't matter. Okay, well, what are you actually avoiding that does matter? And in a homogenized world, it takes a lot to bring the truth to the surface. It really does. It seems simple enough, but that's why we have coaches. That's why we have mentors to help us dig through the rubble faster and see the forest through the trees that we actually can't see. And this can be a cycle of self-sabotage. I'll notice this. I, for my one-on-one, -on -one, it's a minimum of six months. Iconic, my mastermind, minimum of six months. Why? I find a lot of people are coach hopping or course hopping in the online space and wondering why they're not actually seeing the results they want. And it's because you're not actually allowing someone the time to recognize and see these patterns come to the surface and different aspects of how you default into the not self purpose take hold. But you're not giving anyone enough time to see that, to generate solutions for it or create new identities for it, right? So it can be the cycle of self sabotage that will come up as well. And this is why in the head center, the not self purpose, people don't deal with what really matters in their life and business because they're avoiding the truth. And you guys know when I actually show up for podcast episodes, it might not be frequently anymore. It seems I will make a commitment to make it more frequently. However, my intention is always when I show up for it to be an actual training. So I want you to look at, if you have an undefined head center, where are you avoiding the truth? And therefore keeping yourself busy on things that don't matter, right? All right, let's go like right down to the root. I mean, it's defined here, but we can make believe and pretend that it's undefined. Now, we also want to remember in the body graph we are kind of these little pressure cookers between the pressure center of the head center and the pressure, the adrenalized pressure with the root. But that's not bad. We need energy moved through the body graph, through our being to the throat for expression. So with the root center, what the not self purpose is that we get trapped in is this thinking of 
I can't think about it. I'm too busy. Especially if you have an undefined head center and an undefined root. It's going to be this internal talk of I'm always busy. I'm in such a hurry. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. And you always feel under pressure. Now, what that does is, again, it stops us from dealing with the things where we can use our adrenalized pressure properly. Because stress is not bad. And the goal is not to get rid of stress. And I think a lot of people believe that the goal is to get rid of stress. So we want to somehow learn how to either avoid it or just get it out of the body. When we are in this place of keeping busy, or I'll see it in business a lot, right? An undefined root client where they're always doing busy work. And they never have time. They're always doing busy work, but they're never committing to the things that actually move the needle forward. And this is where layering happens in the body graph as well. I, I'm in training for the holistic analyst degree with the International Human Design School, where we literally map out the entire not self mind. So there are layers that play in and where you're undefined in other areas make a significant piece of that puzzle. What kind of definition you are makes a piece of that puzzle. All these aspects come together to bring the whole picture into play. However, if we're looking at just that undefined root center, that busyness is preventing you from using that energy in a productive way. So again, what are you avoiding? And sometimes with my clients, what we'll do is we'll pull back the layers and I'll say, okay, well, let's look at a Google Drive calendar. Let's block out a calendar. Let's color code a calendar for you. And suddenly this person that was so busy, I can't think about it. I'm too busy. I'm always busy. I'm always in a hurry. I can't fit in a live. I can't fit in this. I can't fit in that. Wouldn't you know it? There's actually a lot of free time in their schedule. So then the question becomes, well, what are you actually avoiding by not doing the needle moving activities? And how can we build your resiliency during times of stress as well and times of pressure? There is a bell curve for stress and pressure where it's ideal. Adrenalized pressure is not bad. For example, today with the channel mutation, it's that adrenalized pressure that gives us the energy to mutate, to change. The Ajna. All right, let's go over to the Ajna, my friends. This is going to be your thoughts, answers, opinions, insights. I like to think of the Ajna Center as a software, uh, like the software of the computer. The Ajna is that to us. The not self theme, of course, is pretending to be certain, not self question. Am I trying to convince everyone that I'm certain? When the Ajna is trapped in this not self purpose, you're forcing yourself to always be certain based on pressure. And if we're adding in different centers, again, layering it, you could be forcing yourself to be certain through the Ajna so that you can prove yourself with the undefined ego or proving yourself or attempting to prove that you're certain through the undefined Ajna so that you don't trigger other people's emotional waves through the undefined solar plexus. That's how we can start layering it. And then, you know, because of that, you're not actually letting go of what should go through the undefined splenic center, right? And there's so many other ways that it can show up, but that's just one example. So you put so much pressure on yourself. And I see this over and over again with undefined Ajna clients trying to be certain, forcing themselves under this immense pressure to be certain when they were never meant to be certain anyways. And it takes you out of, as well, this beginner mindset, this curiosity, this fun, depending on, you know, childlike wonder, for example, today with the 58, that joyousness for life today, if we're using the just now chart as an example, well, there's 58, joyousness, the gate of joy, finding the joy in life. Well, if you're putting yourself under this pressure cooker of pressure to always be certain about everything so that you can prove yourself or not trigger other people's emotional waves so you can get the right identity and the right direction so you can say the right things. All these stories that come in the not self, there's such immense pressure under there. However, you're going to actually stunt your growth. That curiosity and that beginner's mindset in business, keeping an open mind in business, is what's going to allow you to grow and scale. There is no certainty. 
And I think that's one of the beautiful lessons and pieces of wisdom that the undefined Ajna can bring us. However, if you're trapped in those cycles of the not self-purpose, that not self-purpose of the undefined Ajna is you got to be certain. You got to be certain on any, everything. Be willing to die on that hill because <laughs> you are certain. And this also, I find, takes people out of their masteries. And when we look at, for example, the projector, they're the guide. You go to them for something very specific to have your energy guided in. Well, now if the Ajna is putting pressure on them, you might be a coach, for example. And now the Ajna is putting all this pressure on you to be certain about everything. So maybe you're never actually launching the program because you're afraid you're going to be asked a question that you're not certain on. And God knows you can't say, I don't know, right? With the Ajna. I don't know, but let me refer you to this person. Oh, the pressure and the stress of that, right? Or maybe you just put so much immense pressure on yourself to have all the answers and it takes you out of your mastery. And these are, this is the pressure of the not self and the not self is trying to live out its own purpose. And especially as adults, it takes work to break the habit of being you. The habit of being you has been being in the not self, identifying with the not self. The habit we want to get you into is being the true expression of who you be, leveraging your strengths. The sacral, undefined sacral. It is defined here, of course, but we can play make-believe. It's fine. Um, I'm not used to using this software, but anyway, we don't need to get in the story of why I'm using this software today. <laughs> I'm on my wrong computer and my MMI professional software with the International Human Design School doesn't work on my Mac, but this is also software I don't tend to use even as my backup. Anyway, the sacral. We know the sacral. It's the projectors, the reflectors, the manifestors. The manifestors are energy types. However, they still have the undefined sacral, of course. Only the generators and manifesting generators will have that defined sacral. So when we're looking at the sacral, there is this energy of not knowing when enough is enough. Now, I want to have this distinction. Just give me a second. We're going to charge my computer, guys. We're just going to pause here. Thank you. Is there? Oh, that's not the charger. Yeah, I don't think so. Is this oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. I didn't realize my... We're just rolling. We're having tech issues today, guys. Oh my gosh, this is so funny because it reminds me of Emily D. Baker. And she had, do you guys watch Emily D. Baker? I love her. She was streaming the other day and she was muted for like five minutes and didn't realize. But let's carry on. The joys of live streaming. When we're looking at the undefined sacral, very often people are convincing themselves that all it means is they don't know when enough is enough in terms of work energy, right? Because people just equate the generators and MGs with the workhorse. And when they erroneously <laughs> dedicate just work energy to the generators and MGs, it's giving a misconception of the sacral. And then I'm noticing people that come to me for iconic my mastermind or one-on-one -on -one mentoring aren't noticing where the not self is actually being mapped in their body graph because they're missing this one important distinction. You can say we have a chart that has an undefined splenic center and undefined sacral. 
It could be not knowing when enough is enough for a direction in business, a person in your life, a habit to finally release, all of those things. It can be, I don't know when enough is enough in letting go of things. I don't know when enough is enough in the direction I'm going in, undefined sacral, undefined G center. So it's not necessarily simply work energy. And that distinction is really important because it's creating a lot of resistance for people in their business. So with the sacral and the not self purpose of the sacral, it becomes so much of this madness in your head because you're never giving up. You will keep going. You will die on that hill for whatever that hill is. You will keep going. You will hold on to it. You will hold on to that certainty, undefined sacral, undefined ashna. You will hold on to that person. You will hold on to that direction in business. You will hold on to those beliefs and identities. You'll hold on to it. And you're going to drive yourself crazy. And not only that, but your business is going to be really fucking hard because the not self is not you. It's a distortion. It is a distortion of your energy. And people end up building these not, so, not self lives. And then wonder why business is so much harder than it's meant to be. Wonder why wealth is so much harder than it's meant to be. Wonder why creativity is so much harder than it's meant to be. Now, the generators do know when enough is enough. The flip side of this, remember I said even definition can have an unhealthy state. The generator does know when enough is enough. The problem, they're quitters. They keep quitting shit, right? The not self generator is the greatest quitter of all time. And all they do is meet resistance because all they're doing is quitting. So they're getting into the wrong things that their energy isn't available for. And then they're quitting it. And then everyone else is in this cycle of, I will die on this hill of what I'm doing, who I'm with, the beliefs I hold, whatever the case may be. Right? So keeping in mind that the not self purpose there, it just keeps you in this loop of not knowing when enough is enough. And it becomes so distorted, whether it's the sacral or whatever other center we're looking at, it becomes so distorted. It also begins to distort, distort the definition and your experience of the definition. So it's important to not just recognize this, but then on the flip side of that, actually take action on that as well, because you will notice it starts to distort the definition. Right? All right. Splenic center. The undefined splenic center. Raw used to always joke that, because again, like I said, there's unhealthy expressions of the definition as well. And he used to always joke that the hospitals are full of splenic authorities and defined spleens who did not listen to it. <laughs> so of course the splenic center is animalistic, right? It's instinct, it's fears, it's our well-being, it's our immune system, it's intuition, it's truly survival. The not self theme is going to be holding on what isn't good for you. We've already talked about that. And the not self question is, am I holding on to things that aren't good for me? But if you have that undefined sacral too, you're not going to know what's, when enough is enough. So you're probably going to tell yourself, no, this is good for me. It's fine. It's fine, right? So the undefined spleen doesn't feel safe. Often with the not self purpose, I don't feel safe. So I don't want to let go of defined spleens. I don't want to let go of these behaviors. You know, it's almost that known discomfort is better than the unknown, which allows you to have a life wilder than your dreams. And that's kind of the mantra of the spleen. The known discomfort is better than the unknown reality if you take that risk. And what ends up happening within the spleen, the not self-purpose of the spleen as well, is it becomes addicted to anyone that will define your spleen, whether they are good for you or not. So this loop the not self spleen gets into is this hold on, don't let go no matter what, no matter what it is, no matter what it does to you, no matter how unhealthy it is, do not let go of this person. Do not let go of this habit. Do not let go of whatever it is because it makes me feel good. Even if you ask yourself, am I holding on to things that aren't good for me? And the answer is, well, maybe at the heart level, you know, it's a no, or you know that things aren't good for you, but you still hold on to them. And I was a counselor for a long time. I worked in the mental health field. I worked with teenagers, adults. I even worked in battered women's shelters. And I've seen the real life 
embodiment of that hold on no matter what within that undefined spleen. And it can feel like your survival is at risk. It absolutely can. So keeping in mind that not self purpose. And again, the real work becomes uncovering, de rebelling what the truth is, and then what the next steps are. Because sometimes also, you know, you should give it up. But you continually go back into those loops. Because that known reality tends to be better than the unknown on the other side. If you leave, if you pivot in business, if you start talking about what you actually want to talk about, whatever the case may be, right? And we don't want to deal with that pressure, the not self-purpose of that. Maybe you know you should give it up, but with the undefined root, undefined spleen, undefined root, you're in too much of a hurry. So you're not able to focus on what matters. You're not able to focus on what actually needs to go. Or the undefined head, you know, the undefined splenic center. And sure, you're on the fence. Do I let go of this? Do I not? But, oh, I have so much to think about. So, right? Can you see how it starts to layer? I have so much to think about. So I can't think about what matters. But the reality is you're distracting yourself with the shit that doesn't matter. So you don't look at what does. And it layers. And that's why I'm so committed to long-term coaching containers with my clients. Because... A lot of people are conditioned to believe you just need a foundation call and then you're good to go. This is layered. And it takes time in some, in some cases, often cases, it takes time to get to the bottom of what's actually going on and allow you to live the fullest expression of who you are. It's not just here's your foundation call and off you go. The program also is how we learn. I want you to keep that in mind as well. We are constantly being bombarded. The program is the neutrino field, what Ra called it. We're constantly being bombarded with neutrinos. Even today, we're being bombarded with the neutrinos that are creating this pattern of energy. And so not only are we looking at our patterns that we're holding within the body, that's why I termed the March workshop that I'm hosting. It's a human design deconditioning workshop, but I call it the body keeps score because we're not only looking at the layers of conditioning internally, but we're also looking at how are we dealing with the program itself and then developing the resiliency to continue to follow our inner authority and our inner truth, despite what's going on within the program so that we can become wise on it rather than identify with it and also build that capacity to hold more. I say this to my clients often, if we're bumping up against the same questions, we can't grow. The quality of growth of your business relies on the quality of questions you are asking. So if we're continually getting stuck at the exact same problems, well, you can't actually grow until you transcend it. Well, you probably can't grow and transcend it because it's still loops and memories that are held within the body. So again, that's why I'm so excited for the March workshop, The Body Keeps Score, where we're going to look at what is your body graph? How is this being mapped within you? And then release it from the body. And then, of course, in April, April 3rd, it's going to be amazing. I love talking about you are the brand. We have you are the brand, nail your brand voice. But you have to be you to nail your brand voice. Otherwise, you're living out and being the voice of the not self purpose, right? That's so important. You have to be you and speaking your authentic truth to nail your brand voice. Otherwise, you're just being the voice and you're not self-purpose. All right. The solar plexus. So it's about 50% of humanity we're looking at with the solar plexus. I think everyone knows by now it's the emotions, it's emotional fears, it's desires, passion, feelings, moods, the emotional wave. If it is defined or you're amplifying other people's emotional waves, of course, if it's undefined, the madness of the solar plexus. I have the solar plexus undefined and it is the highest up in the not self deck on my body graph. Like I told you guys, we will be discussing that in the March workshop, the body keeps score, which is a human design deconditioning workshop. The madness here is turning the other cheek. It's like the good girl, good boy. It's avoiding the truth. It's not rocking the boat. And this distortion then gets turned back on the emotional beings trying to control others' emotions. And so is this entire loop. And this can create a whole ecosystem within the house because most houses have a mix, right? 50-50 we're looking at with the solar plexus. So we have this mix of the undefined, not self, 
undefined solar plexus, amplifying everyone else's emotions, and then turning it back on the emotional beings in the house, trying to control others' emotions. And at the end of the day, this is all this distorted madness of the normal mind. The normal mind is the not self mind, right? That's normal. We have to keep that in mind. When I say the madness of the normal mind, and I'm referring to the not self, it's because the, the normal mind is what we consider the not self. That's the fucking madness of all of this. <laughs> That's the craziness of this. What is the not self is what we consider normal. And I've seen it helping thousands of people and thousands of people will sit there and identify with the not self over and over and over again. And then wonder why they're re meeting resistance, wonder why their business isn't moving forward, wonder why their career isn't moving forward, all those things. So when we're looking at the solar plexus, I want to tell you guys a story. So Rich, Richard Rudd. Oh my goodness. I talk about, I'm certified by Richard as well. He's been one of my mentors on my journey with Jinkies. And so I always flip him in raw all the time. Anyway, raw had this lecture and he said that with the emotional undefined emotional center, the undefined solar plexus, as soon as you notice this not self purpose being lived out, you have to correct it. So there was this time my horses were out in this field with this horse that was a kicker. And that's one of my lines. Horses will be horses. Horses are going to be stupid in the field. However, a malicious kicker that is intending to land a kick on another horse is a no-go for me. Like I will remove my horses immediately. Why? You can easily break legs, easily break shoulders that way. And that's a death sentence for a horse. And it was one of my friends that was running the facility. And there was this madness of the not self purpose coming out of kind of turning the other cheek and not wanting to rock the boat too much because I actually really like her. She's a friend of mine and I didn't want to be that problematic border. And so I kind of lightly said, I'd love if my horses weren't in that paddock, but I made it almost in a joking way. And so obviously she didn't take it seriously because I wasn't presenting it as serious. I was operating through this madness of the undefined solar plexus. And so I was remembering this lecture from Ra and he said, as soon as you notice that not self purpose kick in for that undefined solar plexus, you need to fix it. You need to call the person up and fix it. Now I don't call people. I don't get on the phone. However, I reached out to her immediately and I said, look, you know, I can't stop thinking about this. It's driving me nuts. I know I kind of made a joke about it, but in all honesty, they have to be removed from that field or I'm removing them from the farm. And she's like, oh yeah, why didn't you say that? <laughs> you know, of course we create all these distortions through the not self on how things are going to go and how do you do this in business? Do you do this in life? Do you do this with wealth, right? All of the worst case scenarios, but when we're just up front and we operate through alignment with our energy, people are usually reasonable. So when we're looking at the not self purpose as well, and kind of how all these interplay with each other, the material plane, the world that we're in existence with, it really demands us to be busy. And I really believe that in that busyness, we don't have the space to actually hear. We don't have the space to actually be present with who we are. Now, I also don't believe in the other end, which is what a lot of people do is they just lean back and then hope things will be delivered to them. They don't take action and they hope the manifestations will come true and they wonder why their business isn't moving forward. However, Ross said the material plane demands you be busy. So just be busy. And so what I hear that as and apply it to business, because I primarily work with business clients is, well, if you're busy, you can't do needle moving activities in your business. I know a lot of clients that claim to be really fucking busy. And then again, we look at the, we break down their schedule and it's just a lot of busy work, but not needle moving activities. So again, okay, what can we look at? How can we map this out in the body graph and identify the not self purpose that has you trapped there and what you're actually avoiding underneath. So again, maybe the undefined head center is avoiding thinking about what does matter because if they think about what does matter, they realize through the undefined splant center, certain things have to go a person, a direction of business, beliefs, identities through the undefined G center. And here's the thing, guys. Through operating correctly, we can avoid being caught in these traps because they are mind traps, not brain, but mind traps. However, you're never going to be perfect. 
It's how fast can you get back on track when you notice the not self purpose gaining hold. The not self strategies, they go to the mind, they become a priority to the mind. The mind will lead you as a false authority. And then you'll wonder why following your sacral, the yes over your sacral isn't working out so well for you. Right. But it's actually the mind as a false authority, false inner authority, lying and conniving and pulling you off track based on these not self purposes. And sometimes they feel very real. And I do find and this is why I don't offer one off foundation calls anymore. I do offer one off consulting calls for business, for high level professionals, because that's a different energy when it's going into consulting and we're leveraging BG5 for that. However, I don't do foundation calls anymore because honestly, if you want my honest opinion, I believe all they do is feed the false inner authority of the mind. It gives you just enough information for the mind to be like, ooh, I got this, bitches. And so now the mind's lying and conniving and you believe it's true, but still these self-sabotage patterns that are playing out because at the end of the day, it's not just information that's going to change your life. It never will be. The not self mind is going to see purpose through the priorities of the not self. So your mind, for example, with an open spleen is always dealing with hold on, don't let go of it. So that's going to become a priority of the not self mind. Not living your design, not following strategy and authority, not following soul, not listening to your inner truth, not allowing yourself to be led. And anything that comes to challenge it will cause self-sabotage patterns. Because here's the thing, we always default to the level of our identity. And if we've identified with the not self, I'm someone who thinks about things that don't matter. I'm someone that's always afraid of triggering other people's emotional waves. Those are all identities based on the not self. If we identify, and I want you guys to hear this because this is really fucking important and it will change your life and your business. If you identify with the not self and that is your identity, as soon as you start challenging that, you're going to go in your self-sabotage patterns because you will always default to the level of your identity. Always. It's a guarantee. It's why when I was a personal trainer, well, I still am. I just don't market it online anymore. When I worked in big box gyms, there was always an influx of people at the gym in January. How long did that last? Maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks. The bodybuilders, and at the time I was as well, in the bikini and figure divisions, we'd all get, you know, it's fine, it's fine. Just deal with it for a couple of weeks because people will be gone. Why? People default to the level of their identity. So they try to change their environment, but they haven't changed their identity. So nothing actually sticks. And I'm seeing this happen in the coaching space as well as people are doing the external things. They're hiring the coach. They're taking the course. They're posting on social media, but they haven't changed their core identity. And they're still being driven by the not self purpose, which is getting the exact same results in the external reality because they're going to keep defaulting back, keep defaulting back. And they're never actually going to be leveraging their strengths, leveraging their wisdom and following strategy and authority and allowing the environment to match them at the level of their destiny. All right, let's get back into the centers. I got a little bit off track there, but that's a generator for you. I start responding to my own shit and then we get kind of off track, but that's, it all needed to come through. The throat center, if it's open, I mean, we know this, right? Communication, manifestation, it's where all the energy is being pushed to for expression. Like I said, pressure is not bad. If you don't have pressure in your life, if you're just so in flow that you have no pressure, I can guarantee you're not actually achieving a whole hell of a lot. With flow, you're often achieving and accomplishing more in a day because you're able to move without resistance. Flow is not the same thing as just sitting around doing nothing and praying, like post and pray, right? Or hope to God your manifestations come true. So we need that pressure, the head pressure to the throat for expression, the root pressure to the throat for expression. And then it's that speaking and that doing. It's that manifestation, but not in law of attraction manifestation sense. Law of attraction manifestation doesn't exist in human design, although there are some incorrect theories on it when we get to the variables. But I do have podcast episodes dealing with that as well. The not self theme is trying to attract attention. It's trying to be the star, saying things to be the star. And the not self question is, am I trying to attract attention? And here's the thing. Very often when you're stuck in that not self purpose, 
you're going to tell yourself, no, this was so aligned to say it this way. So on point, <laughs> right? We're going to get trapped in that. And again, the mind's going to lie. It's going to, to deceive, to continue its own purpose and to continue living out its own not self life that it's trying to lead you down. So the throat's going to do things simply to get attention. Now, the madness here, the absolute madness here is I don't care if I'm a value. I don't care if what I say is a value. I just want to attract attention. I don't care if what I say is really, truly my truth. I just want this to go viral, right? People posting reels or joining real champ as an, that's something for me to respond to right now. The real challenges are really big. I'm telling you right now, especially if you're an undefined throat and you're doing something to get attention, you are painting a layer on the not self. That's how Ross says it. Painting a layer on the not self. If you are doing things just to get attention, if you are joining a real challenge just so that your profile can go viral, it's going to blow up in your face. I can nearly guarantee it. Right? So how we start to see the not self layered and mapped is you might have that undefined throat and the undefined Ajna. And you'd have the undefined head center as well from that, right? And it's the undefined throat and undefined Ajna are saying, I don't care. I want this to go viral so I can show people I'm certain and that I'm always right. Right? Ross said the not self world is why we have gurus, movie stars, and the spiritual gurus. The not self world. The most devastating of all within the not self is the comparison as well that comes with it, right? In the homogenized world, there's little diversity. And we're seeing this come up over and over again. People are speaking like their mentors. People are doing things to get attention because it worked for someone else. People are holding on undefined G-Center to directions or identities that no longer serve, but they think they need to because they believe it'll get them somewhere in business. We have become so homogenized that often we don't even see how homogenized we actually are. And we're so trapped in this comparison. I've had people say to me, oh, I'm studying at BG5 because you do. I said, well, is that actually what you want to do? Uh, and they pause and they think and they're like, no, actually, I think I was just getting distracted. Right? People get so distracted by what other people are doing that they're not actually allowing their magic to shine. You're not meant to be like me. You're not necessarily meant to have the certifications I have or say the things I have or do the things I do or lead in the way I do. And I think one of the most toxic things that is happening in the online space, especially for the undefined throat centers, is, well, I'm just going to speak like this person until I find my own words. You always had your own words. You were always individuated. You were always unique. You came here unique. Don't tell me you need to use someone else's words until you find your own. You have your own. Hold yourself to a higher standard where there's no excuses to express your unique individuated state. Because it's a slippery slope with that homogenized world. And once you start going down there again, and you start living out this not self purpose and it starts to tangle and weave itself, create a little rat's nest. You start to lose yourself in that. You start to lose your uniqueness. And it, at that point, it's not the algorithm that's the problem. At that point, it's not because Instagram is shady and trying to hide your shit. That's the problem. The problem is you're not being you. So you're not standing out in a busy newsfeed and it's busier than ever. So you have to be willing to leverage your unfair advantage and your unfair advantage is you because there's no one else like you. And guys, knowing isn't enough. It doesn't matter how much of this you logically understand in your mind. Very often, all it does is give your mind more power over keeping you stuck in the not self purpose. So what are you doing with it? As Ra or as Ra Ruhu, as Tony Robbins says, success leaves clues. Get with people, put yourself in places where they can help close that gap between where you are and where you want to be faster. And where I see an issue within the online space as well is 
overconsumption of like short-term containers or short-term mentoring or short-term this, short-term that. And again, not allowing the depth and growth that exists and happens from long-term mentorship. I have people that say all the time, can you do a course like this? Can you do a course on that? Can you do a course or a workshop on this? No, you want that type of attention or learning or growth. Come work with me and Iconic. Come work with me one-on-one. -on -one. And it's because that's where the real growth is. That's where your real growth will be. Because again, as you can see, this is layered. It's not something that can be done in an hour session. It's not necessarily something, especially when we get into mapping the not self on a deep level. That's something that's very intricate based on your energy. So the ego heart center, this is willpower, the ego, the material world, self-worth. It's very tribal and it's, yeah, the material plane, money, business, <laughs> Not self theme is feeling unworthy and undervalued. Not self question is, do I think I have something to prove? When we're looking at the ego and the heart, this is 70% of the population that have it opened. And it's one of the most profound places of driving yourself mad. It is one of the most profound places of driving yourself into a place of the not self purpose. It is, in fact, at the top at the, of the not self deck. And again, we are going to go over that in the March workshop. It is the top of the not self deck. One of the most profound places that we see this come up is this unworthiness. I'm not good enough. It's a theme of a not self pur purpose of I'm not good enough. And here's the thing, and this is something I say to my clients very often. It was something I said to one of my projector clients recently, because we have this illusion with the undefined heart slash ego that it's making promises to other people that we can't keep. I want to turn that around and ask you, if you have an undefined ego, how often do you make promises to yourself that you don't keep? That's the first thing we need to address. And then we have to start building up that confidence in self that you're actually going to keep promises to yourself, that you're actually going to follow through. And here's the thing, the way that it overlaps and plays on the different centers as well is, well, I'm not good enough because I'm not really certain. So if I get certain, then I'll be good enough, right? Undefined ego, undefined Ajna. And that plays out and drives you insane because you'll never be certain. And then therefore you'll never be good enough. Does this make sense? Let me know if this makes sense, right? So it'll drive you into, I should be more certain, right? I should be more certain. And if I'm more certain, I'll be worthy. And then I can have the right direction. Undefined ego, undefined Ajna, undefined G center. And if I have the right direction, I'll know what to say so I can finally be the star. Undefined ego, undefined ajna, undefined throat, undefined G-center. See how it can layer. Nothing in the body graph is in true isolation, as much as we want to believe it will. So the moment the not self controls you, others also have authority over you. The not self has authority over you and everyone external to you has authority over you. I just realized, so I have a couple notes to keep me on track, but I don't think I wrote notes. We're missing the G center. We will also do the G center though. <laughs> the G center, let's do that one. And then I'm going to let you guys go. I believe that is the last one. I can't believe I didn't have notes on it. <laughs> I wrote a couple points. I said, we're going to stay on track. So we hit everything. And then I forgot a center. Undefined G center. This is, oh, let me get my little cursor over there for you guys on the call, just in case you don't know where under the G center is. I mean, that's very possible as well. You're brand new to human design. You found this on YouTube maybe, and you don't know. So the G center is identity. It's love direction. That love is love of the self, love of others, love of humanity, love of the body. There's different aspects of the love there. The not self theme is fixated on finding love and direction. And the not self question is, am I looking for direction and love? One of the biggest issues I see in the online space and in the coaching industry is taking on, like I said, someone else's identity to maybe feel safe, right? Maybe that's someone with a defined G-center, defined splenic center, and you have those two centers undefined, but it's taking on someone else's identity. If I just have the set identity, if I just have the set direction, then blank, 
Then I'll be worthy with the undefined ego. Then I'll know what to say to be the star with the undefined throat. Then I can be certain with the undefined Ajna. And there's this forever seeking of this consistent access to identity or direction, but that's not who you were meant to be. And the not self is going to keep you, keep sending you in that direction. And I find the undefined, sorry, the undefined G center really susceptible to the gurus, really susceptible to the quote unquote leaders, because there's this feeling of belonging and this feeling of wholeness, but you were never actually meant to have a fixed identity or a fixed direction. The example and analogy I use very often with my clients is the undefined G center is the person that gets in the car for a Sunday drive with no GPS on. And imagine all the beautiful places, the beautiful things, the beautiful shops in these small unknown towns that you would have not experienced if you had a set direction. See the beauty in that. See the beauty in not having a fixed direction. And from there, you get to be wise on identity and direction. You actually get to help the defined G sender. And that's when we start getting into selling through your openness. Now, with this analogy, the defined G center gets into their car on a Sunday and they put in the coordinates of where they're going. I'm a defined G center. And even if I'm going somewhere, I know how to get to, I still have the GPS on. And it's, it's such an analogy for the defined G center. So let them, let the defined G center do that. Let them have the set identity, set direction. You're actually, as an undefined G center, incredibly wise on identity and direction. So you get to help the defined G centers. But it's going to feel as though, especially if you have that undefined ego, undefined G center, well, you're not good enough until you have a fixed identity. You're not good enough until you have a fixed direction. And don't get this confused because often undefined G centers will feel as though, well, I can't have a fixed identity or direction in business. You can position yourself in business you in a certain way that is consistent. You can have a certain brand in business that is consistent. You can have even reoccurring courses in your business that are your core courses that are consistent. And through that, you're actually leveraging and selling the wisdom you've gained through the openness of your G-Center. So I think a lot of undefined G-Centers also get into these loops of thinking that no fixed identity or direction means that they're launching month to month and on this launch hamster wheel and they eventually burn out. Of course, anyone would. So what I want you guys to use this free training essentially as is freedom to operate in a way where you are not being blindly dragged down some path to begin looking at what are the habits that I have that are pulling me off track in business and life. We love to overcomplicate, overcomplicate things in business and life. So it's this balance between, yes, understanding, and then how do I embody it? What's on the other side of this? And who can I get to help me recognize my patterns that actually no longer serve to help free me from this madness, to help free me from this gilded cage? And this is also what I see very frequently. This is what's happening in the online space right now is people having built these gilded cages, very successful businesses off the not self and feeling trapped because you will feel trapped in that gilded cage. Eventually it will be suffocating. Eventually it will be too much and you'll want to burn it down. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this. This went much longer than I expected as it usually does once I get started talking. If you did enjoy this, it's also, it's streaming on YouTube as well as the podcast, the HD CEO Psyche podcast. I would love if you tagged someone, if you're watching on Facebook, if you shared it with someone, if you're watching on YouTube, or if you shared the podcast, if you're listening over on the podcast, that's how channels like this grow. And I really put so much energy into making sure that when I come on live, you're getting an actual training that can move the needle in your life and business. So I'd really appreciate it if you shared this with someone that you know can use it. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go for now. Oh, one more thing I need to celebrate with you guys. I have the most badass community and I love celebrating with you guys. Officially, my approval, my certification came through with BG5 as a cycles analyst. analyst. I'm so excited about this. I absolutely love doing cycles and the analysis of business cycles for my clients. So watch out. Those will be offered shortly. They're not offered right now. We have a lot happening in life 
in March, we have another horse coming, a rescue horse coming this month. We have chickens coming this month. So I'm not taking on more one-on-one -on -one calls this month. However, keep an eye out because I will be shortly booking into April for those. And they are absolutely incredible. It's shocking to see how accurate they are. And it really helps you prepare for the next cycle in business and life and see what's coming. It's really incredible. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. All right. On that note, I will talk to you guys soon. I hope you enjoyed this. Bye, guys.